Hello everyone, Brian Tomaszewski here. In this video, I want to give you an overview of some of the ideas related to the statistical foundations for geographic visualization. If you're interested in harnessing the power of maps for showing numerical or quantitative information, this video will help you get started with some important ideas to keep in mind as you begin to use software tools such as Geographic Information Systems or GIS. Let's first review two core ideas from statistics, population and sample. A population is a total set of things that can be studied. A sample is the portion of the population that is actually examined. Often, thematic maps that show numerical information are based on a statistical sample. For example, this map produced by the US Census Bureau shows poverty rates of the total population by county. Given it is not possible to study the entire population, the map shows a sample of the population that was studied. This fact is even noted in the text on the bottom left of the map. Another core idea is descriptive versus inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics describe the characteristics of a population or sample. Descriptive statistics you might be familiar with include measures of central tendency, such as the mean or average. Inferential statistics is the idea where you make an inference or generalization about a population from a sample. This is the core idea of hypothesis testing in statistics. To put the ideas of descriptive versus inferential statistics in a geographic map context, the census map that we saw previously is presenting results of descriptive statistics, or more specifically, measures of frequency such as the poverty rates. A map like this that is graphically representing descriptive statistics could then be used as the basis for delving deeper into a given research question using inferential statistics. For example, notice in the southeast part of the United States, there is a pattern appearing of high poverty rates by county. One could use this pattern as the basis for beginning a research study on why poverty rates in this part of the country are high, such as comparing poverty to income levels. It is also important to discuss methods that are used for analyzing spatial data that ignore location. You'd be surprised how often people don't actually consider geographic maps as a method for presenting quantitative data that has a location component. So let's briefly take a look at some of these methods and issues they can have for analysis. For example, this image shows a raw table of data that was the basis for making the poverty maps you saw previously. A raw table, of course, is good for showing specific information, but ultimately is going to fail to provide any meaningful overviews of the data, especially patterns and trends like we saw previously on a geographic map. Group frequencies are a common technique used to provide overviews of data. In this image, you see the previous raw table data has been assigned to various classes or bins based on the value of an individual record. This approach is good for an overview of the data, but it's not a graphical method like can be used with a geographic map. A histogram is a graphical way to show tabulated frequencies. In this image, you see the same data set you saw as a group frequency table now displayed graphically as a histogram. The histogram shows the number of counties that fit within the predefined limits of each data bin. Histograms are commonly used as a graphical data representation device. However, they still will not show you about specific locations or geographical trends and patterns like can be done with a geographic map as you saw previously. Scatter plots are another common method that can be used to try and understand how different variables may have a relationship with one another. The basic idea with a scatter plot 
is that you have one variable that is plotted on the x-axis and is known as the independent variable, and another variable that is plotted on the y-axis that is known as the dependent variable. In this example, that is using the same data set you saw previously in this video, the scatter plot can potentially reveal if the poverty rate is dependent upon the population count. Like group frequency and histograms, scatter plots are very useful graphical devices for understanding how different variables interact with one another, but ignore specific locations. Modern GIS tools like ArcGIS Pro or QGIS provide all of the capacity you will need to implement the ideas of the statistical foundations of geographic visualization. For example, creating maps that can graphically represent descriptive statistics, the outcomes of inferential statistics, as well as a variety of tools that you can use for data analysis for analyzing spatial data that ignores location, in addition to comprehensive tool sets for making geographic maps. If you are new to creating geographic maps for representing numerical or quantitative information, keep the ideas around the statistical foundations of geographic visualization in mind as you grow in your skill set. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.